Ever wonder what happens after you die? Well, in, in Canada, the government gets a fax. Now, <laughs> you, you don't even remember faxes. My daughters don't even know what a fax is. But they do know what an iPad is. And the other day, I was playing the sound of music for them while I was cooking them breakfast. After about 40 seconds, I suddenly hear, Paw Patrol, Paw Patrol, whenever you're in trouble. Rose and Claire had swiped away Julie Andrews and had swiped in their favorite kids show. So if Apple can design something so intuitive that my three-year-olds can find exactly what they want in about 40 seconds, why does government still build websites the grown-ups can't figure out? Government exists to improve the lives of citizens. Now, we have more power to do that with digital than ever before. More power to understand people better, to understand their needs, and to serve them better. Today, more than ever before, an organization, government or business, needs to really understand its core purpose. Otherwise, it's going to be irrelevant very quickly. Again, government's purpose is to improve the lives of people. Blockbuster thought its purpose was to make it easy to pick up videos in your neighborhood. Netflix understood that they were both in the entertainment business, but Netflix actually started off delivering DVDs right to your door. Now, the difference was that Netflix really understood that people wanted entertainment at their fingertips, and they didn't care how it got there. So when digital delivery changed the game, Netflix was ready. Blockbuster wasn't even on the field. We can't be a blockbuster government serving a Netflix citizenry. Now, Netflix was a startup. Government isn't. <laughs> so how can we create that digital startup mindset in a government? Well, sometimes really big uh, successes result from really, really big failures. On October 1st, 2013, the US government launched Obamacare. On that day, 4.7 million Americans tried to register on healthcare.gov. Only six people succeeded. <laughs> it was one of the biggest government IT screw-ups in history. President Obama, in his response to it, adhered to the adage, you never waste a good crisis. He effectively created a digital startup right inside the US government. He created 18F and the US government digital services, bringing in the top techies from places like Silicon Valley, not just to fix government IT problems, but to harness digital to serve people better. So, and the same model, by the way, was created in the UK and in Australia. Um, and also in the governments of Ontario, and more recently, the government of Canada. So what does this digital mindset really mean? And how can you create that within government? Well, there are three basic points. There are three principles. Number one is a relentless focus on users, and actually letting the customers, the, the clients, shape the services they receive. Number two is the need to be agile to start small and to scale up and to try new things all the time. Number three is to be open. Open data, open source, creating open innovation. The more you share, the more you gain. Let's start with people. Amazon didn't just take the transaction of buying something and move it online. Amazon uses data all the time to serve you better. Every time you buy something from Amazon, they pay attention to you so that they can understand you better, so that they can serve you better the next time. So why can't government do that? Why can't government? Every time you interact with government, government has that opportunity to pay attention to you, to understand you better, and to serve you better the next time. Ask yourself, why can't you get the same quality of service from your government when you renew a passport that you get from Amazon when you buy something? The other thing that uh, is really important that startups do, that governments need to do better, is working in the open. 
Whose life today was improved by open government data? Well, if you used a weather app, or if you Googled a destination, you were using open government data because that's what fuels those apps. What's really cool and what's really powerful is when you take open data, you combine it with open source, and you get smart people inside and outside of government working together, sharing data, sharing tools, sharing ideas, all focused on improving people's lives. Now, when I talk about how these things can really make a difference for the lives of Canadians for the future. And my colleagues ask me, do you really think we can do this digital thing? I respond to them that that's kind of like asking, do you really think we can do this breathing thing? <laughs> because in 2018, you're either digital or you're dead. And if a company doesn't get digital right, it's out of business. If a government doesn't get digital right, it's out of touch. And today, if we can't serve citizens well, they're going to lose faith in government. And if we can't get the basics right, how can they trust us with the big things? And Today, more than ever before, we have the power to move the needle in terms of the quality of services we deliver to citizens. Today, more than ever before, we have the power to understand citizens better and to fulfill their needs better than ever before in history. Digital gives us the power to reboot the relationship we have with citizens. It means that instead of serving people through their physical addresses, that change all the time, that we can serve them through their digital addresses. Think about it, if you're a low-income citizen, if you're precariously employed, you don't really have a permanent physical address, but you do have a digital address. You have an email, you have a cell phone, an address that stays with you for a very long time, maybe your whole lifetime. I'd make the argument that, in fact, for vulnerable citizens, Digital delivery can make the biggest difference in their lives. I'm going to give you one example. Right now, the government of Canada is struggling to increase the uptake of the Canada Learning Bond. That is the bond that helps low-income families kickstart their savings for post-secondary education. Now, that bond goes to low-income families. It's free government money. You'd think it would really be a hit. Fact is, there's about two-thirds of the families who could qualify for that benefit haven't yet enrolled. Solution? We could use digital to actually nudge the Canadian families receiving the Canada Child Benefit to get them to apply and enroll for the Canada Learning Bond. That would make a huge difference for the future of a whole generation of families and children. So what else lies ahead in this bright digital future? Well, for starters, when you die, the funeral home won't have to fax a notification to the government. <laughs> now, digitizing death notices may seem like a small thing. I think we should be able to get at it right away. But I want us to be even more ambitious. I want us to deliver great services to citizens while they're still alive. <laughs> In fact, digital is already helping us save lives. A couple examples. The government of Canada is actually leading a global initiative using open data to help predict and prepare for the outbreak of infectious diseases. By doing that, sharing emergency room data, by sharing uh, weather patterns and and, and travel patterns, we, we are saving lives. We're using artificial intelligence right now to watch social media posts, public social media posts, so when parents complain about toys malfunctioning, we can actually notice a trend and we can actually contact the manufacturer earlier and, and again, save lives. We've talked about digital at the uh, end of your life. We've talked about digital saving lives. What about digital just making life better? That's really what we've got to focus on. In Estonia, 
where you don't have to apply for a government service, it just happens automatically, you're enrolled. Or in the UK or Denmark, where your tax form fills itself out, it's done automatically. You get a text or an email once a year with your tax form. If, it's, if you've got a problem, you let them know then. Otherwise, it's just automatically submitted. Picture doing your taxes in a couple minutes from your phone on the way to work on the bus. That's the kind of difference that good digital government can make. So when I get asked by colleagues whether or not we can get this done, I say, we got to get this done. Canadians are depending on government getting it and embracing digital and serving citizens better. Other governments are doing it. Businesses are doing it. It's high time that government does it. And I see a future where citizens don't have to wait for a government service. Where citizens don't have to apply for a program, they're just automatically enrolled. Where smart people inside and outside of government are sharing data, tools, and ideas and code, not just to improve lives, but even to save lives. Where there are services that none of us have even yet imagined that become available at our fingertips. Government exists to improve the lives of people. There ought to be an app for that. Thank you very much. Thank you.